up here on stage with me uh, real quick over here to my right. This is my dad, uh, who's a very big, very big part of this ministry and a big part of my life. And the reason why uh, it's also helped bring this show to you. Um, real quick, uh, when I was born, when I was about three months old, uh, my mom and dad had prayed for me that I'd be used in music someday. And they always say, be careful what you pray for, what you ask for, because someday it's going to come true. And here we are 46 years later with a television show. So your prayer has uh, definitely been answered. Um, and also, uh, I want to do something very, very special today, uh, kind of as a surprise to my dad to say thank you and back. Um, he had a, a healing many, many, many years ago. And uh, he's got a testimony about that. And I really want him to share that with you today. And uh, kind of my way to say thank you back. And since you're a big part of the show, I want you to be part of the show. He's always back here behind the scenes and everything that goes on. And we're going to put you in front of the scene today. So if you want, just let them know about your hand and how what God did with you and, and with me in our, our life. And uh, the camera's yours. Well, about, uh, about a year ago, uh, I meant when Mark was about a year old, uh, August 31st of 1964, um, I was working at International Assembly of God headquarters as a pressman, and uh, <clears throat> I run my hand in the printing press. And, of course, the uh, doctor wanted to immediately at the emergency room amputate my hand. And uh, the pastor came from church, and we prayed, and... God revealed to me in an audible tone in my hospital room that he was going to heal my hand. Um, I have not lost my hand, as God did heal my hand. And uh, that was uh, a lot of years back. God's healing continues through our life. And God has done many miracles through my life in a lot of other areas. But I'm so thankful that God has uh, given me this uh, opportunity to let you know how God's healing uh, can come in to your life uh, by just going to him in faith and prayer. And uh, my prayer for you today is if you need a healing in your body, that uh, I know that he's able to do that for you. All right. Also, uh, tell him a little bit about, because I know when I was just a baby, I remember coming to the hospital room. I remember walking in the room, and you were like on one bed on one side, and another guy uh, had his leg up in a cast on the other side. But I didn't know what was going on because I was too young. But let them know what the doctor did and, and how they saved your hand. Well, um, Mark, of course, was just a toddler, and uh, I'm surprised that he could remember that at, at his age, but it, it was quite a traumatic experience for the entire family. Uh, Dr. Don Spils Silsby was a uh, the surgeon, and had come in and my hand had developed gangrene and the gangrene was running up my arm and I had now risked losing my entire arm. And uh, so he was preparing me for surgery to remove my hand just above the rest. And uh, the next morning they were prepping me for surgery when he came to the room and uh, uh, sewed my hand literally to my stomach with 102 stainless steel sutures. But when he looked at my hand, he said, I, I can't believe what I'm seeing. He says, I see no gangrene. My hand was as black as it could be, and it was all gone. The colorization was back in it. It was pink and fluffy, although you could see all of my tendons and my bones where the flesh had been torn away. And they attached my hand to my stomach for 31 days. And then cut it loose, and of course, there I have it. Have it today. So. Yeah, and uh, we always joke a lot with Dad about this. Uh, if you look at his knuckle; it is locked. He cannot straighten the finger out. Uh, so every time he kind of points at just at an angle, so we say, "Hey, we're going to go over there," <laughs> and we kind of you know, we've always kind of had fun with you over the years and everything. Yeah. But like I said, the, the, this here is why I want you on here because this is a very very special show for me because. I want to do something totally different than our, our pattern we've done. And, but because uh, I'm so proud of my mom and dad, uh, when you look at them and their support uh, for me my entire life, my mom and dad is the picture of unconditional love. And no matter what you go through, they've always been there for me. And even when I messed up, they've been right there to love me through it instead of like scold me, basically. You just love me through it. And then growing up, uh, instead of like telling me a bunch of the do's and don'ts, uh, you live by an example. 
and uh, I remember that. So there's a lot of, and then, of course, you know, me cruising around as a kid out of high school, uh, he was a police officer for a long time, so I couldn't go anywhere in town without being followed. So, uh, but uh, but I, wanted, I didn't want to do anything wrong anyway, so I didn't want to, you know, pretty much disrespect you or have people look at you and say, boy, your son is really messed up, you know. So uh, I was I was tailed quite a bit after work, and everywhere I went uh, by the other cops, they'd pull me over just for the fun of it. I remember that. But my mom and dad has been there for me no matter what it is, uh, unconditionally. And that's the same way our Father in Heaven is. He's with for us unconditionally. No matter what we do, what we've come, or what we've done, He's right there to forgive us. He cast our sins into a uh, sea of forgiveness. He don't remember them anymore. And, uh, and that's the same love that you have for me and my sister. You just, you just love us through no matter what we've done. And then uh, the support that you've given me all over the years, I remember no matter what I do, you've always made time to be there for me. And, uh, you know, it's kind of sad today because a lot of parents, they don't take time for their kids. And uh, they get too wrapped up in their lives, their parting life, or whatever they want to do, just, you know, put the kids to a babysitter while we go have our fun. And I like to see that if you're a parent out there today, you know, that's one thing I like to see is start taking more time with your kids and support them more and uh, let things of the world and things of the life kind of go by the wayside. You're a family, and uh, we're losing a lot of families today and, and broken homes and stuff because parents are too busy in their own life. And, I, and, uh, I, and I'm just so, so grateful that we have our family together. And today I wanted you on here to kind of surprise you and, uh, and let you share because you're such a big part of the show. Anything else you'd like to say? Well, I'd like to say hi to mom at home. <laughs> <laughs> hi, mom. Well, She's watching hi, back mom. home. Cookie's so. uh, Cookie and I have been married uh, 49 years this coming June. Yeah. And have uh, Mark and his sister Lynn, and we have two wonderful grandchildren, and uh, by Lynn, uh, Danny, and Samantha, and we're so happy that we have such a family that serves the Lord. Every one of us, and. Uh, we thank thank God for that following. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna go ahead and break out in a song uh, here in just a few minutes uh, instead of kind of waiting at the end of the show. But this next song, the reason why I want to do this song is because this is one of your favorite songs, and uh, I want to do it. And it's called Boundless Love, and uh, like I said, it just it's perfect because no matter what we go through, God loves us no matter what. And he's there to pull us through no matter what. And he don't keep looking at us for our past. No matter how we stumble and how we fall, his love is right there and bound together. And I'm going to step over here and do this song for you real quick. And uh, I hope this uh, ministers you and blesses you as much as it blesses me and my dad. So, Dad, this song is for you. Boundless love. Boundless love 
This is my life It's what I know And I can't believe That he selected me Jesus my Lord It's you I owe Jesus my Lord It's you I owe Oh, boundless love, unending joy, this is my life, it's what I I'm going to do another song just for a second before I do that. Dad, that was for you. And uh, I'm going to do the next song, and the song is entitled More. And uh, this song means a lot to me. It's kind of like God had mine and write this song uh, just for my life. Um, well, I was riding with him in, in Springfield, Missouri, oh, in the early 80s, and he had an album that came out called More. And uh, I listened to it, and this song really touched my life. And uh, we was riding down uh, Highway 65 there in Springfield, and he had the Bible in his hand, and, man, it had been raining for like a week, uh, and just, I mean, solid rain. And was riding down the road, and I looked down and I said, you know, Milan, man, I'm sorry, but, uh, man, it's been raining. It's uh, misery, <laughs> you know, and everything. And he quit reading his Bible and looked over me and said, Mark, he said, brother, I love rain. I love watching God's creation. And it didn't really set into me what he meant by that. And then the concert of CBC that night, uh, he kind of made a point uh, in his uh, sermon that night and uh, about that conversation we had earlier in the day. And, of course, I felt about, you know, this tall when he brought that up to me. But uh, it did, and, and uh, I realized God's creation, and we need to see more of that. And uh, so I love rain now. It seems like every time it rains, a blessing always happens. That's God's promise. And just the other day, I was riding down from work and had a big storm come in with the, the heat and everything. I was having a double rainbow. And uh, so I really love rain now. And what I mean by this song more is that going across this country and seeing a lot of things, a lot of folks, they let religion and tradition, they let man's way of doing things uh, cause confusion in the church. And when somebody gets saved and they come into the church for the first time, they see what's going on. We're almost there to entertain people now instead of back to the basics because we want to entertain and get the love offerings and, and, and do things. And if you're not happy, you leave the church. And if you leave the church, our attendance goes down, so we've got to please you now. So we're almost like people-pleasing sermons. And we need to get back to what Jesus said. Get back to my way, because I am the way, the truth, and life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You've got to do it my way. You don't do it your way. And by doing this, we have to have more of Jesus and less of us. And I'm going to do this song for you. And uh, it's a blessing and it's a prayer. And I hope these words minister to you right where you are today. And if you need more of Jesus and less of yourself, there'll be a number on the screen, uh, my email address, my webpage. Write me. And we have a prayer team in place to pray with you. Break my heart and change my mind. Cut me loose from ties that bind. Lead me as I follow you. And give me the strength to follow through. Peace. 
listen to me. explains to us that we need to be more like Jesus and less of us. Because when we let more of us and more of man come in our life, we really mess things up. And uh, a pastor once told me, uh, you know, they say that you're the only Bible that people see. Well, what Bible are you showing them? What are you showing them in your life? Uh, a lot of people live their life where it's like we go to church on Sunday morning, but then we want to live our own life Sunday afternoon all the way to Saturday night. And then we say this one thing. Well, I need to clean my breath up or I need to clean my life up because I'm going to church tomorrow morning. And I've got to get cleaned up, so I can't do a lot of the things I've been doing all week long because I'm going to church on Sunday morning. No, it doesn't work that way. You see, they say that wide is the road, but narrow is the path and only few find it. I don't know about you, but I want to be one of the few that find that road. So by doing that, we have to more, read more of the Bible. We have to understand that we have to serve Jesus His way and not our way. In other words, when you leave church Sunday morning, apply that sermon to your life and then live it seven days a week. And then each time you go back into a church, just get refired up. And that's what we need to be doing. Uh, Dad, before we close the show, is there anything you'd like to go ahead and add to this? Uh, well, you've kind of made a family show out of this, it seems yeah. like. And I'd just like to say that it's like I told Danny when he married uh, your sister Lynn that I don't like the term in-law. He's our son-in-law, but I told Danny, I said, Danny, you're my son. And I'd like for everybody out there that has family to look at all of the family as family and realize how important family is and to devote more time to it because the time goes by too fast. Yeah, it goes uh, really by really fast. And, you know, traveling the country, then back home, it's, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of here lately that families are just in disarray. They think more of themselves and, and more of their own life. And I know in life, with uh, like a lot of families now, they have to have two jobs to make it. Like when you brought me and my sister up, mom was able to stay at home and raise us. And uh, that was a blessing. Yeah. Uh, but the way it is nowadays, uh, you almost have to have both parents make a living. And with working different hours and a lot of jobs, not allowing uh, parents to, to work like that, uh, the home life is kind of going to the side. And when they let the ways of life just come in and they start losing the love for each other, they start losing the spark that uh, got them together to start with. So I challenge all you married couples out there, if you've lost that spark, let Jesus be the head of your house and get that back and start spending less time with your buddies at work, the ladies' night out, the guys' night out, 
and start making it more of a family night so the kids and a babysitter while you go do your thing. Start doing things as a family. Let's start bringing the families back together. Um, so today is a lot of different show. It's more about family. And, and, uh, and I thank you so much. And I want to do this show to, th to say thank you back for loving me the way you mom have and uh, all the support that you've given. And so I wanted you to be on here today for that, to say thank you. No, thank you, son. We're really proud of you. And we thank the Lord for you. All righty. Uh, now, next month, we have a, a very exciting show coming up for you. Um, if you're all in NASCAR, uh, there's a, a NASCAR driver called, uh, his name is Morgan Shepard, and he has Racing with Faith Ministries. And uh, we are going to have him on this show uh, for our, our May show, the second Sunday of May at 630. Uh, we're going to be using with Morgan Shepard. He's going to be explaining to you about his uh, Racing with Faith Ministries. A lot of you know, if you watch NASCAR, he's now in the Bush Series from Winston Cup, or, uh, or it's the... Uh, I can't even think of the, it's Bush Series, Nationwide Series. Uh, like Winston Cup, it's now, I think, the Sprint Cup or Nextel or something, but it's still Winston Cup and the Bush Series to me. But sorry, NASCAR, but uh, habit. But uh, he's now uh, went from the Nextel Cup or Winston Cup back in his day into the Nationwide Series. He's got the bright green, lime green car that has Racing with Jesus on the hood. So uh, be, when you watch the races, be sure to support him. And then next month, we're going to have him on this show. Be sure to watch that. Also, uh, uh, Robert and Julia uh, in Austin, Texas, they do my web page for me that, that these guys here at the studio put on the web page. They build that thing, and they've extended on there now a comment section to where if you have prayer requests, you've got a, a comment about the show, uh, anything in your life, you can go there and now, and you can actually uh, put that on there. Uh, it takes you know a lot of money to, to put this TV show on and travel around the country because I go to different churches. I'll be in Claremore, Oklahoma with Michael Jones. Uh, uh, April 11th at 2 o'clock in Claremore, Oklahoma. Uh, a lot of you know Michael, he's, uh, he's sung on this TV ministry before and also have been the ex-member of Cool in the Gang, I think from 84 to 89. We'll be ministering there in Claremore on the 11th. And be sure if you're in that area, come by and see us. Uh, and then if you're in the Rolla, Missouri area, I'll be at the uh, United Methodist Church on the campus in Rolla, April 25th for all three services Sunday morning. And if you'd like to get me uh, you know, on your, in your church, uh, write me. Uh, get in touch with me, and I'd love to come to your area. Uh, also, uh, there's a donation button if you'd like to donate to kind of help keep this TV ministry on the air. I'd sure appreciate that, and God will bless you by it. Just like going to McDonald's or Burger King, you rely, they rely on your money to, uh, to help them out. And we, you know, if you want to donate, if it's on your heart, do so. My name is Mark Aldrin. I thank you so much for letting me spend this Sunday night with you here with Music with Mark. Thank my dad, John Aldrin, for being on the show with me. And just remember, more of Jesus and less of you. Instead of looking to man and tradition and religion, look to Jesus in the Bible. I'll challenge you to read the Bible instead of just going by what man says, and you'll see a difference in your life. Hey, God bless you, and we'll see you next month. God bless you.